So today we're gonna to be focusing on f-stop and f-stop only. Now the beauty of digital, it's WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. So if you take a picture and you look through the viewfinder or you press play in the back of the screen and you chimp and you see that you don't like what you got, you make your adjustments right there, right on the fly, which in turn allows you to learn faster and enjoy the process really. When you're capturing a picture on your camera, you have full control of how much light hits your sensor. And one of those controls is the f-stop. Now, depending on what kind of lens you have, the markings may be on the actual lens or they may just be a readout in the back of your camera. As you notice, this lens has barely any markings on it. Now, this lens here is a fully manual Nikon lens and it actually has distance markers on it and it has your f-stop. Now, f-stop refers to the numerical value that represents the aperture on the lens. So for example, on this lens, okay, 1.4 represents this aperture or this opening. And if I go up to f22, f22 represents this opening or rather this narrow opening. So this has lets in less light, whereas this lets in more light. Pretty simple, right? And you may be wondering, why the hell do I need to know about f-stop, right? Because that's what I was wondering when I first started. But for one, you really need to know about f-stop because it allows you to control the amount of light that you let into your camera. But the other thing is that it gives you that dreamy feel. It gives you that, that out of focus, uh, bokeh, uh, look that you see in a lot of uh, photography. So if you want to separate your background from your subject, where your subject is the main point of focus, we're talking about depth of field. A shallow depth of field has only your subject in focus, and a deep depth of field has your person, or your subject rather, and the background in focus. Now, portraiture is a great example of where you would want a shallow depth of field of a 1.4, 2.8, and so on, the, the low end of the scale. Now, the exception to that rule on portraiture would be an environmental portrait. Now, an environmental portrait is a portrait that tells the story of the person, your subject, in their environment. So, for example, so here we are in a picture where I used a high f-stop because I know that I wanted the car, the scene that he was in, and I wanted him in focus. This was actually shot in Cuba, as you may have guessed. I was lucky enough to go down there. I saw this moment and I knew that I wanted to get the car and him in focus. I used an F13, which is on the higher end of the scale, the F-stop scale, and will produce a picture with a very deep depth of field. So this is another picture. While I was waiting for my tire to get fixed, again, I knew that I wanted whatever he was doing in focus, his environment and him in focus. So I opted to go with an F10, which again is other end of the scale that would give me a, a deeper dip, depth of field. This was on my way back from Cuba. And as I come up the landing on the second floor, and I knew that I wanted to underexpose him, but still have a deep depth of field. For this one, I use F18. Um, funny enough, that's a uh, jet fighter plane. So I'm gonna move on to separation, where you would want to separate your subject from the background. This is the first one. And I struck up a conversation with this uh, gentleman and I asked him if I could have a portrait of him and allowed me to get this wonderful portrait. And I rocked uh, a two, an F2 to get this background completely out of focus. <laughs> I met Pollyanna on the train. I decided to ask for a portrait and we happened to get off at the same stop. And again, I wanted a shallow depth of field. So I rocked with a 1.8 on here and gave me this really soft background. Last one here for separation. This is uh, one of my students, Melanie. Again, I knew I wanted this shallow depth of field, this very dreamy look. This one, I did a 1.8 to get me this 
soft, soft background with her in focus, or you can go in the other way and uh, get everything in focus like there is here with the gentleman uh, working on the tire. Of course, my guy over in Cuba washing the tire of his car. So next time, before you lift your camera, think, do I want to include the background or do I want to exclude the background? And that will tell you what f-stop you want your camera to be at. Now ISO, shutter speed, and f-stop go hand in hand when it comes to exposure. But in this video, I'm talking about f-stop specifically. And to be able to focus on f-stop and let the camera handle all the other settings, you're gonna wanna put your mode dial right here on aperture priority. In this camera, and in most cameras, it is the A. Once you put your camera on aperture priority, you'll be able to open and close the lens to your liking, and the camera will handle all the rest. This will give you the liberty to focus on just the f-stop. As you become more advanced, you can put it on manual and be able to change all three settings to your liking. Now, if you don't have a camera to test out, I highly recommend visiting camerasim.com. Brings you to the website. Um, you know, it's $39 a year, what have you. You go straight down and you go to camera sim for web free. Click on that and you're gonna be brought to the camera simulator right here. And if you get the flash player plugin, make sure you click on that, unblock the plugin. So make sure you allow flash to play. So here we are. Uh, what you're looking at is through a camera viewfinder. This is what you would see normally when you put your eye up to the viewfinder. You would see your shutter speed, f-stop, your exposure meter, and your ISO. Down here you have the corresponding settings, ISO, aperture, shutter speed. This is the exposure triangle right here. This large button here is your shutter release. So if you click that, you're going to hear the shutter um, and it'll take a picture. You can change your weather uh, from mostly sunny to completely sunny or into uh, nighttime. And what you're gonna see is that you're underexposed by two uh, full stops. So I usually go with like mostly sunny. Um, you can change the mode. You can go from aperture priority to shutter priority to fully manual. You could also put your camera on a tripod which will stabilize things minus her. Notice she is moving, okay? So, uh, and what we're gonna focus with today is aperture priority. So when you put your camera on aperture priority, as I mentioned before, the camera takes care of the other settings while you are able to adjust the aperture. Notice if I go down to the bottom, shutter speed is gonna try to compensate and bring it down but anything below the length of your uh, lens uh, is going to give you a blurred image so my lens is 43 i'm way below 43. so if i take my shutter if i go to manual here i take my shutter and i bring it at let's say 60. if you notice i am before i take the picture i am underexposed by one and a half stops so what i'll do is i my aperture is where i want it my shutter speed is where I want it. I'm gonna take my ISO and play with it. So right there, I'll be half, half a stop or a quarter stop overexposed. I'm gonna take my picture. And what I'm expecting with this uh, f-stop is that she should be in the field of focus and so should the background be in the field of focus. Um, this is a great app to learn photography without having a camera just yet. This app allows you to take 15 shots. Um, if you uh, already, if you took your 15 shots, just simply reload it like that, and then it'll reset your 15 shots. So that's, that's one way around it. Feel free to play with this app. It's a great little online app. They also have an app on iOS and on Android. You know, if you don't have a camera and you wanna play around with camera settings, this is great. 
Also for teachers that are trying to teach the exposure triangle, this is a great, great tool to be able to get uh, the fundamentals down for students if you don't have enough cameras to go around or if let's say it's raining outside or what have you. And I hope you guys learned something that maybe you were having a tough time with before. I want you to go out there and practice. If you've ever had the same situation as I do and you find it confusing, leave a comment down below and I'll be able to answer and clarify any questions you guys may have. Remember to tell a friend to tell a friend Hit the subscribe button and the like. Hit that bell for notification for next time I upload my videos. I will see you guys next week. Same time, same channel. <laughs> Until next time, keep shooting. Until next time, us. Mother. I'm not picking this up. <laughs> oh my God. This video is due today at 7 and it's now 6.11.